Hello, my name is Sergio Danelli. I work for the uh, Education Services uh, Department at, uh, at Juniper Networks. I, uh, I will be talking about Slacks, Slack scripting on, on Juniper devices. This is mostly targeted towards, uh, towards people that have a uh, routing, firewalling, switching experience, but do not have any or very little scripting scripting experience. This is the first video of a series. Uh, we're just going to go over very, very basic stuff in this first video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of scripts already built so you can see uh, some of the stuff that uh, that can be done with scripting. Uh, so the first one is uh, it's a little um, it's a combination of two, two shell commands uh, just as an example. Uh, so, like, let's say you're working with the switch, a layer three switch, or a firewall with uh, switching capabilities, and you're wanting to find a particular IP address on, a, on an Ethernet port, and that firewall or switch also has a layer three interface in it. Um, so, usually, the way you go around about that is you um, you will ping the host to populate the ARP table, and then. Uh, So you can see what the MAC address is, and you would, um, you would grab that into your buffer, and, and then you'll see that, that that F004 is the port connected to 192.168.1.101. Uh, so let's say you want to combine those two outputs into one command. You can do that with scripting. Um, you would uh, so I already have the script configured on the box. I would uh, give it an address, and that same address should give me the same output. So you can be really flexible with the script. You can have it, um, you know, look for a specific address that you point out, or it can dump all the contents of the table to you. And you could even have it populate. The ARP Ethernet switching tables by pinging each device on that subnet, um, and you know it just kind of gives you an idea. It can go through each each ping, and it will give you an idea of what the script is doing. Let's look at that script real quick. So that this is the script. As you probably will not understand any of what's happening here. If you're, if this is the first time you've been exposed to Slacks, so this is this is the script, and hopefully by the end of this series you can be writing something like this or something similar to this, uh, something that could use you that, that could be become useful in your environment. Let's say you're working with MPLS, and you have a couple of interfaces configured under uh, under the MPLS protocols. Um, and you don't have that interface configure with uh, with the family MPLS. As everybody knows, this that has worked with MPLS. There's going to be problems if you don't have that family MPLS configure and you meant it to be part of your MPLS environment. Um, so what we can do is we can create something called a commit script, and if we commit that configuration, it can tell you that uh, that you don't have family MPLS configured. So the way the script does that is that it looks at the protocols MPLS if it sees an interface in there and that interface doesn't have family MPLS configured, it will, it will tell you. So we can go ahead and just configure family MPLS on it. We can do that for both those interfaces. And after we commit, there's no more warnings. So. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a pretty useful script if, um, if you're wanting to, uh, to, if you're working with an environment that, that uh, defers a lot of this stuff down to an operator uh, where, you know, he might not be very versed with MPLS, but, but he knows that something's wrong if this happens. Um, so these two scripts kind of show you the power of, of what's, what scripting can do for your environment. Um, so we can look at that MPLS script. This one's a lot shorter. 
it's right to the point. Basically, um, it's just looking for for uh, you know every interface in the MPLS protocols, and then looks at that same interface over in the um, under the interface configuration. And then if it doesn't have family MPLS, it gives you that warning. So now that we looked at those two scripts, let's go over um, some of the underlinings of, of SAC scripting, which is XML and XPath. So XML, you've probably seen it on the router, really used on uh, Juniper devices. Uh, so let's look at a, an XML file. Uh, this XML file is, uh, is basically the output of a show version pipe XML on a, on a router. Uh, so let's uh, let's break it down a little bit and just kind of explain what the, what the contents of this file is. Um, so s some general comments about XML uh, basically is the is the go-to parsing information. Um, basically, the the advantages of using XML is that it's a very well-known format. It's very easy to look at and see kind of what's going on with it. I mean, as you can see. Uh, there's a software information tag here, and then a software information closing tag here, and in between there's some other info like host name, product model, product name. So any anyone that's not even familiar with scripting can look at it and, and uh, understand what's going on with it. Um, so basically XML, uh, just a few concepts to point out. Uh, there's a root tag. Uh, root element or tag um, uh, in every document. In this particular document, it's rpc-reply is the opening tag. Every tag has a closing tag. There's an RPC reply on the, on the very bottom. The element can contain other tags, like this one contains software information. And it could also contain data, like text. So as you can see, hostname over here has actual text. Product model has actually has actual text in it. Um, it can also be a, a tag, an empty tag. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's there's other concepts like uh, namespaces, which is what this is, um, and then uh, there's attributes, which uh, there's not one over here uh, at the moment. Uh, those are those will uh, I will explain those as we run into them in later videos. But for now. Um, they're not relevant. Just, to, just need to understand the elements and the, and what, what kind of information it can, it can contain. Um, so XML by itself is is nothing really uh, if it's not used with with something else as parsing it. And that's when XPath comes in. XPath is basically uh, a very powerful expressive language. Um, it's used with uh, with SLACs to to pick out information from an XML document. Basically, here I have a I have a script with some uh, examples uh, ready to go. Um, so so what you see here on, uh, on line number three, four, and five is I'm trying to grab the uh, host name uh, from the uh, document on the left. Basically, XPath. It's after uh, it starts with the with the forward slash there, and uh, basically XPath is just allows you to to navigate an XML document and pick out values from an XML document. This is a very straightforward some very straightforward examples. This this three lines are gonna grab the same info. It's just three different ways to to do it. Um, so by using the two forward slashes and navigating all the way down to the host name tag. Um, you can skip out everything above it, all the... So host name is a child of software information, which is a child of RPC-reply. So you can skip all that all that and go directly to the host name uh, as kind of a shortcut with the, with the two double slashes. And you can also do that with, with the two double slashes and software information and just navigate all the way to to host name, um, or you can actually start from the root, which is um, which is RPC reply, and then you only need one forward slash there because you're starting from the root, and just move move your way down to software information, and then down to the host name, as you can see here on the uh, on the left on the XML document. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Uh, there's an utility that comes with uh, with some of the uh, XPath XLACs. 
stuff that you can install, um, that you can process XOS documents uh, locally on your machine. Um, so the name of that file is XML version 2, and then the name of that script, which, which is just going to output the host name, is uh, test2.slacks. Um, so as you can see, it prints out Junos 1 three times, like, uh, like we, uh, we predicted. So XPath can, can get a little more powerful. Um, uh, so let's, let's, I, I also grabbed the show route in XML. Um, and uh, let's look at that. So, so here on the left, uh, we have a little more, uh, more info from a show route command display XML. And uh, what I want to do with, with XPath is I want to pick the uh, active tag with the asterisk, which means that, uh, that they're active. But I don't want to print out the asterisk. I want to print out the RT destination. So there's a way to do that with XPath. Um, so, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing a for each, I'm using a for each loop, which I'll go over uh, in, in a later video. And uh, this is where the uh, XPath part of this uh, comes in. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the RT entry. I'm navigating all the way to the RT entry uh, tag. And then I'm saying with something called predicate, which goes in between brackets, uh, to match, well, the next tag called active-tag has to have an asterisk. And then go back one element uh, from there. From, from from RT entry and then print out the RT destination and as you can see here on the left RT destination is the actual prefix that that active tag um, belongs to so uh, so let's go ahead and see and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, print out a message called active route and then uh, I'm going to uh, concatenate that which is what that underscore does uh, basically puts two strings together and then that period means uh, the context node so the current node that falls under that uh, XPath uh, expression and uh, you know I don't expect you to know exactly what I'm talking about here basically what I'm trying to showcase is really the power of XPath you don't really need to know what I'm talking about quite yet just just kind of watch and see what I can do with 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 slacks and, and XPath. So let's go ahead and run that. Um, so XML document route slacks. So it should print out every prefix um, that has the active tag on it. So as you can see, it uh, it did that and uh, and it looks it looks correct. So um, that's just a brief introduction to XML and XPath, which are heavily used by XLAX. Let's go ahead and write a quick Hello World script and, uh, and put it over to the router. So, um, so I have a, just a quick Hello World script. We have, a, we have a matching template. Once again, I'll go over what that means here in um, subsequent videos. Um, mainly my, my goal for this video is to spark your interest and also see that it's that is very practical. Uh, so we have a we're gonna sh do a, an op script and it, we're gonna print hello world to the screen for the router. So let's go ahead and copy that script over to to a router. Uh, all the scripts all the scripts go into this folder, and then the op scripts go under that folder, uh, a folder called op under var db scripts. So we're going to go ahead and copy that over to it. We're going to SCP it over. Then we're going to go move over to the router. And then we're going to configure the script. Uh, this is uh, mainly a security, uh, a layer of security where you need to explicitly configure the script so not anyone can execute a script or, you know, from, from operational mode. So uh, let's go ahead and execute. Yes. Okay, we're gonna look at that. Make sure that the script's there. Okay, it's the same script that I had, so let's go ahead and execute it. Okay, so just exactly what I told it to do. So this is the first video of a series on Slack scripting. 
And uh, I just wanted to go over some very basic stuff. You can spark your interest in this and, and just see, uh, show you a couple of real world scripts that, that you can build uh, and, and it completely enhances your your everyday interaction with, uh, with Juniper devices. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.